As a ten-year-old, I eavesdrop on my father telling his harrowing story of almost being gassed to death. I listened to my father's somber voice as he sat with his friends in the living room below and spoke in his thick Germanic accent. I listened, concentrated, and memorized his words as if I knew one day after he was gone it would be my duty to pass them on. Many had not seen my father since before the war. Many were fellow survivors with numbers tattooed on their arms and memories permanently burned into their brains. Thirty years later, I again heard my father's voice tell the story, this time resonating from the speakers of a cassette recorder. My dad died of a heart attack one day before his unedited Holocaust memorial tape arrived in the mail to the Boca Raton home. For the next three hours, I sat transfixed. Doctor, when you were a slave at Auschwitz, what was your most harrowing moment? Well, there were so many frightening moments, I couldn't count. I don't know why or how I survived. But there's one uh, miraculous moment that I have often told my closest friends. It was on the morning during a uh, roll call, it was a cold, wet morning. And my constant pangs of hunger had retreated as the metallic taste of fear washed over my bleeding gums. The SS doctor had determined that uh, I was no longer fit to work. So, therefore, I had to die. Uh, so, I have gone to the point, I and a few other men were marched into a group of new arrivals. The mothers held on to their babies and their young children. Elderly couples walked in and in. In the middle of the courtyard, I faced what the Nazis termed uh, the delousing showers. For having lived in, uh, or better said, survived in the extermination camp, I knew that all of us were going to be gassed to death in those showers. I had been told by a man who brought the bodies to the oven. I smell the putrid odor of burning human flesh. The stench permeated my nostrils as well as the entire camp. The smoke rose from the chimneys of the crematoria, and ashes of the silenced snowed down upon those selected to live. I know most of my family had been murdered. Death stopped appearing as my enemy for having descended into hell. I was wondering if there actually was a heaven. So I and a thousand other people were ordered to strip. I unbuttoned my camp shirt and and as I went here, I could feel the buttons on my, on my shirt. And I saw to the pocket was a yellow six-pointed star. In the middle of the star, as if the star alone was not enough sufficient to tell the story, one word appeared to tell my religious affiliation, Yoda. Yeah. <sighs> My entire reason for encampment is summed up into one four letter word. I dropped my trousers, which were encrusted with filth and a stance of death. I folded my 
so-called pajamas on the top of my wooden heeled shoes. And as my fingers grazed the star of David, a sharp, a burning electrical jolt crushed my heart. But as, as the pain subsided, I, I covered my privates with my hands. I was among uh, all the naked. I felt as I listened to the cries of the babies. So I shuffled towards the, uh, the gas chamber. I, I looked to the perimeter of the, of the crowd. As I shuffled towards the gas chamber, I looked into the dark, smoke-filled sky and rain battered my face. I prayed the Shema Yisrael, and I wondered about the existence of the Almighty. I glanced around at the perimeter of the crowd and saw a Nazi guard holding his rifle, pointing towards the crowd. The guard was talking to my clothed lover, my girlfriend. The guard's voice turned to a scream and he pointed his gun at me. You vermin, get out of line, Rouse! I knew that if I had hesitated for a second, it would be my last. So I hurried to find my clothes and shoes among a thousand piles. Miraculously, they appeared. Well, I questioned my luck. Now I would be allowed to survive. I would be allowed to survive in hell for another day. In seconds I dressed, stepped out of the formation, and turned my back as a thousand naked people were led to the gas chamber. I feared, looking back. My father never told his story directly to me. I thought he wanted to protect me, but I believe he knew I was perched on the top of the steps.